Today, guys, we are doing Omen VOD review on Haven. The person that uh, purchased the coaching and live VOD review is in gold. Uh, he's, he has a very specific question in his mind, and that is, I'm struggling a lot on Haven, so I want to see how I can improve on this map. So today, not only that we'll be focusing on Omen plays, like how he should be playing Omen on this map, but also I'm gonna give you some specific tips and rules and tricks like for Haven as a map, like how you should look at the map, because every single map in Valorant has a certain mentality when you're playing it. Like you need to adapt to a certain playstyle of the map and try to fix the problems of that specific map. Haven is a map where you want to be a bit heavier on your rotations. Like when you're playing on a defender side, you always want to rotate based on a certain indicators during a match and only by these indicators. First reason is your teammates die on one area of the map and you need slowly to pull yourself from one position to another. The second reason is if the enemies breach through a certain choke point. So for an example, uh, enemies are pushing C and they are already at the top of the choke point, or the enemies are pushing B and they're already here, or the enemies are pushing A and they're already here and here, your rotation needs to start. Not only your rotation, but also your smokes to support and cover up your teammates. So basically, those are the two main reasons why you should rotate. And when you're rotating on Haven, you should always be pulling yourself as your teammates is pulling themselves. What do I mean by that? So. If your teammates are rotating from B to A, and you have, let's say, three teammates on A side, you should just do a slight rotation towards the B side and just cover the B push, and, and that's it. End of the story. Like, you need to sell the rest of the map. Because it is pointless for you to stay on the C side, for an example, and then get obliterated by enemies. Like, I don't know, you, you, you play this position to cover the garage area and cover the C long area, and then enemies backstab you here and you are donezo, man. Like, like, that is a very bad positioning on Haven. So on Haven, that is the main rule for a defender side. We have three bomb sites. You need to predict extremely hard, like uh, where the enemies are gonna push next. And when you're playing Omen on Haven, you always want to position yourself based on how the enemies are pushing and what the enemies are doing. Like you never wanna play one bomb site, one area of the map that is pointless. You're not controlling the outcome of your rounds at all. And one more additional rule on on this map, your quote unquote default site is the A site. Uh, we, we should in, in solo queue, you should never have a default site. No matter which agent you're playing, even if you're playing Viper or Killjoy or Cypher, default sites in solo queue don't exist. When I say default site on Haven, I mean the site that you should play when the enemies are abusing that site 24-7, or the bomb site that you should be playing when you have no idea where the enemies are playing. Like when you see me play on Haven, you will see that when, whenever I have no idea what the enemies are gonna do next, I always play the A site, because that is your default site on Haven. Why is A site your default site? Because A site is the hardest site on Haven to be retaked. C is kinda like 50-50, B is usually a bit more easier, B is kinda like a gambling, like uh, basically you have like three different choke points and you can easily outmaneuver your enemies through these choke points and try to take the site control. But A site is a living hell for retaking. On the attacker side of this map, we also have a certain rules that you should be following. Number one rule is on this map, you want to do the least amount of rotations possible. Like in solo queue, when you're pushing something, try to commit to the push. Try to lead your teammates into the bomb sites, choke points, and areas of the maps as best as you can. Uh, don't allow your teammates to rotate too much because it, it is huge map. Enemies can flank you at any moment of time. And the amount of times that your teammates are gonna die from the positions like this, position like this, when the enemies push you, I don't know, like even position like this, it's insane. So try to rotate the least amount of times on Haven on the attacker side. Try to play defaults if you think enemies are pushing you, enemies are abusing you, and hold the area of the map where you think enemies are gonna push next. And also, uh, try to just com to commit to the pushes. So in the first round of every single game that you play, if you're starting on the attacker side, make sure that your push is aggressive push with all five of your teammates through one choke point or one specific area of the map. Don't default, 
don't split apart, don't split away with your teammates, like defaulting in the first round is the absolutely worst thing that you can do. Like in the first round, attacker side has the advantage over the defender side. On Haven, the first round should always be played on the A side because it is much easier to be taken and much easier to be retaked as well. The, the amount of mistakes that your teammates can make on the A site is extremely limited compared to, let's say, mid area of the map, garage area of the map, like here, etc, etc. Like uh, sometimes, uh, like when you're pushing the B site, like maybe enemies are going to flank you, de de demolish you completely. Uh, usually what also happens on Haven is enemies will position their sentinels onto the B site, onto the garage area and onto the C site. The, mo the most amount of utility on Haven in the first round is being positioned in this area of the map. And when you're playing Omen on any any map in Valorant, in the first round, you always want to do some kind of an aggressive play. Like you never want to do a default play because in the first round, you're behaving towards your teammates like, man, I don't know these guys. Like they don't know me, I don't know them. I don't know the enemies. So you never know with what type of animals you're playing in that first round. And it is always better to rely on your own cap capability to push uh, the some site or to breach through some choke point yourself, but in the same time supporting your allies and basically allowing them to breach through these choke points. So my first round strategy for Haven is usually like uh, smoking the top of the site here, doing a one-way smoke on top of the CT area there, I'm pushing the long area of my teammates, clearing this angle, clearing this angle, coming up here, teleporting on top of the smoke and from this position, trying to bamboozle the enemies and trying to use maybe my second teleport to basically outmaneuver my enemies from this position. Is this smoke uh, bad for your teammates? No. Why? Because this smoke also protects your allies from the long area. Tower is fully blocked, basically. The tower from the short area is also fully blocked. And that is how, in the first round as Omen, you can take the control of the round in your own hands, but in the same time support your teammates to push the site. After three to four rounds, when you're playing Omen, you can rely on a bit more default setups, because essentially you're gonna meet your teammates a bit better, you're gonna see how good or bad they are, and basically like you're gonna understand what works and what doesn't work. What's up, tricksters? My name is Charlatan. I'm the all-time Radiant player in Valorant and a private coach that improved thousands of his students. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to subscribe, turn on your notifications, leave a like and comment. I do these voice reviews and coaching sessions live on my twitch.tv forward slash charlatan channel. And if you're interested to hire me as your personal Valorant coach, make sure to check out my improvement programs on the official Discord server. And links to the other social media are down down in description below. The best time to navigate your teammates and the best time to tell them to do something is usually in the first rounds of the match. Like the first round on both attackers and defenders side. Because the mentality is at all time high, the attitude is also high for these players and that is when you can actually tell them what to do. So basically in this round right now it would be the best if, if they push the, the A site and uh, uh, the main reason why I buy in the first round a classic with a light shield and two smokes and two shrouded steps is because you always want to do some aggro play. If you already see that your teammates are going A, like he should have been using his smokes for tower or generally like his smokes as soon as the round started. Like it doesn't matter what your teammates are doing here, doesn't matter what the enemies are doing there. You want to delay the enemy's push with a one-way smoke here and you want to give the uh, like uh, your teammate smokes ASAP so that you can get ready to do some aggro play. If you're already pushing with your teammates in the first round onto the A site, you need to move a bit faster with them. Like this was a very, very like uh, slow positioning, slow movement. Like uh, there is no need to hold like the short area in the first round. Like uh, the first rounds should never be some kind of a split, some kind of a default strategy, some kind of a passive play. You need to play them more aggressive. There is no reason to be passive in the first round or to be holding some angle. Your Sova did amazing play, but it would also be extremely good like uh, if you actually followed your teammates and, and had the chance to follow your teammates, but you didn't have the chance because you didn't use your smokes at the start of the round. That is why in the first round, you will usually see me do the smokes immediately as the round starts. Why? Because I want to be able to support my teammates as they're pushing and I want to do some aggro play. Uh, the CT smoke, completely horrible. Like this is a terrible, terrible smoke. 
uh, for multiple different reasons. Like, uh, the main reason is uh, because enemies, when they're coming th through this smoke, they can literally peek you from three different directions. They can peek you from here, they can peek you from here, and they can peek you from here. That should never be happening for the default smokes. When you're pushing the site initially, you should be using this smoke here. So now the enemies don't have this this area of the map to play. Like, they cannot peek you from the from the CT area, they cannot do anything basically, and if they peek you here, they are most likely dead, because there's only one angle from which the enemies can peek you at that moment of time. Uh, and the second variation of this smoke is the one-way smoke up here, which is the most powerful, and basically like if the enemies want to peek you through this smoke, like uh, they're most likely uh, going to die uh, from that peak. Like, uh, I mean, it's a one-way smoke and you're literally positioning a smoke not only for the push, but also for what happens after the push, like uh, for the post plant. And that is why this smoke is absolutely a big, big no-no. Uh, generally speaking, that was kind of the danger of that smoke. Like, uh, imagine this. Imagine this scenario. Like, if you had here, like instead of the uh, instead of that regular smoke, you had a one-way smoke. Maybe the enemy sage would not have the balls. She would not have the courage to push through that smoke, and maybe she wouldn't be able to do this type of a play. Uh, you were not there for your teammates, not supporting them in time. The smokes for the second smoke was a bit off. The first smoke was great. Like the prioritization, the prioritization of the smokes was insane. Like basically, whenever you're executing some site with Omen, we have the one smoke that is the first priority and one smoke that is the second priority. And the first smoke that you're dropping with Omen should always be the smoke like uh, uh, that uh, uh, covers the first angle that you or your teammates are peeking at that moment of time. So when you're, when you're executing the the A site, your first smoke should always be the smoke for either like uh, the tower or the sm some aggressive smoke like this. And then you're doing the CT smoke because this is usually the first angle that your teammates are peeking at that moment of time. Uh, this is an extremely good like thing. Uh, basically, I love it a lot. Uh, if you already win uh, one round on one bomb site, so, so you won a round on A site. In the second round, push again the same site. Test the enemies, see how they react, see which enemies are playing there, because people in solo queue are extremely repetitive, like it is very, very easy to read them, like they have zero strategies, zero tactics, zero positioning, like everyone is just playing the same angles, the same positions 24-7. So this is extremely good. Uh, usually what I love to do in solo queue, I love to push the same site three times in a row. Why? If you win those three rounds on one bomb site. I mean, regardless if you win them or lose them, in the fourth round, you become extremely unpredictable. Here, we have one problem, and that is, our friend, our Omen gold friend, he is pushing, in the second round, a short area of the map. Whenever enemies are eco, half by, or they are playing some kind of a bonus round, so there's a chance they have a judges, uh, specters, uh, shorties, buckies, etc., you always want to avoid the close quarter gunfights, but literally always. There is no reason to risk your life right now, and you should just be pushing together with your teammates to the A long area of the map. And then, when you take the A set control, you can like try to clear the short area of the map and try to clear the rest of the site. Because right now, there is enormous amount of danger that some charlatan will maybe play in this cubby position right here and you know <laughs> we, we all know on streams how that goes for the enemies like uh, it's not very fun <clears throat> when the enemies are eco half by or they have some kind of a bonus round like a very scuffed amount of money always lead your teammates towards pushing the open areas of the map on haven you want to lead your teammates to push the either a long area of the map or C long area of the map in those type of rounds. It is much better to have a clean gunfight in this specific area of the map here than coming into the gar garage area here or into the B site or God forbid into the short area of the map where the enemies can absolutely demolish you with the shotguns. Okay. 
Oh, no, 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 no. This is a huge mistake. I, I already see this not, is not gonna end up good. But Neon is actually good, man. You see? Like, this is what I'm telling you about uh, these short areas of the maps. Like, it is just, like, better to avoid them and go through the, like, uh, long areas of the maps and longer corridors when the enemies are equal half by. Like here, the, the Neon just did a very good play, but if you went here, I think you would have died from, from that judge like, like a potato, man. This rotation, a bit unnecessary, I would say. I would much rather commit to pushing the A set after that kill, like, uh, because on, on Haven you really want to stay away from, from over-rotating too much, especially when you know the enemies are like, uh, have, have the low economy and, and uh, not enough money to fight you. And plus you got a kill on, on short area, so I really don't know. I, I, I don't know, why did we risk th th this round by pushing the garage area, the short area, like, our Neon got a kill on short. Just immediately comment your teammates or try to push them into the A site. Tell them, guys, let's rush A. Let's rush A. We got a kill there. Let's let's use it and F up the enemies. We know that the Cypher is playing the C or Garage. We know that the Sage with a potential wall is B. We know the Reina is around the B site and Garage area or even C site. Like, just, just go A, like, end, end of the story. On A site, there, there was only Killjoy left. I really don't know why you didn't have enough confidence to engage that sage. Like, uh, plus the sage was holding the orb in her hands. Like, I don't know. Like, lo look at this. Like, uh, basically, like, why did you start moving as soon as soon as you started shooting at the sage? Like, uh, if you already swing some angle. And you're not jiggle picking it or something like that. Commit to the gunfight, especially if, if you think uh, one enemy. Like, right now, the best idea would be to try to control this spray and try to navigate it towards the sage. She's 10 HP only. Like, like you need to poo, spit at her, and 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 she's dead. Confidence is very important in Valorant. Like, and also reading the numbers and reading the enemy's positioning. We can also say that we lost that previous round because of that initial rotation that you did. I, I think that a lot of players in Valorant, they have this uh, fucked up idea where uh, they don't want to push the site unless the site is completely cleared. Like, unless there's no enemies. Bro, like, like <laughs> you're, you're five players, five players pushing two enemies. Like, what, what else do you need? Like, why, do, why don't you have the, the confidence to push the, those two enemies? But in that case scenario, you killed the Omen, there is only one enemy left on the site, and the enemies are doing a rotation. Like, what what, what do you want? Like, do, do you want the enemies to give you the whole bomb site and you play just a post-planned game? Okay. One, one, uh, one tip that I can give you immediately here is uh, start using the shorty as a secondary weapon. Shorty is an extremely powerful weapon, uh, extremely adaptive, like it allows you to have more uh, adaptiveness in your gameplay. And you're able to F up the enemies through the smokes and uh, uh, in some narrow choke points much, e much easier than with a Vandal or Phantom. So for example, if I was in your, ca in, in your situation right now and I had the smoke here in my face, and there is a potential that the enemy Reyna is playing there, uh, because I'm always carrying the shorty with myself, I would just be pushing this area of the map with a shorty, and if the Reyna is there, it is much easier for me to kill that Reyna that has the ultimate with two shots of the shorty, like this, than pushing with a, you know, like Phantom, then my th tip of the gun of the Phantom is extremely visible to the smokes, like already here, the enemies see you, and then like, you know, like a, a lot of problems can happen. This is much better than going slowly like this. Sometimes in pro matches and esports, you will see that the pro players push like this. They place their crosser here and they do this. Why? Because when you're pushing the smoke, uh, facing in front of the smoke, your body is already visible here, but you don't see the enemies because of the tip of the gun, like the tip of the Phantom, Vandal, whatever gun you have. But when you push the sm uh, smoke, like... Uh, 
with, with her with her shoulder with her arm uh, that advantage of the player that is playing inside of the smoke is lost they kill the reina now it's okay to rotate it's okay to rotate that was a pretty pretty solid kill i would say not bad not bad the cross replacement could have been a bit better for that angle like uh, but pretty pretty good like spray control good smoke <clears throat> okay uh, I, I i i don't like this this part here like uh, uh if you're already not doing your utility and there is a chance that the enemies are gonna peek you at that moment of time don't hold your paranoia don't hold your smokes like uh basically hold your utility only at the moment of time when you want to execute some kind of a play okay Okay, okay, we need to slowly move back. We need to slowly move back. One thing I would like to know right now. Is there a... Ah, shit, man. I cannot see it. Listen, you need only one ultimate orb for your ultimate. I don't know if there is an ultimate orb here active. Like, unfortunately, I, I didn't see it in the VOD. I would just F away from that position. I would come up here, pick up. The, the the orb clear the site here with 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 my with my chamber do the one way smokes like for the post plant and then i will just see, see where the spike is click on the spike immediately spam the cancel button you pick up the spike and everyone is happy like there is no reason to fight these enemies right now e even even now like probably like the sea long orb is active like there is no way that the enemies took the like both uh, a long and C long orb. Like right now, I really feel that uh, uh, there is no need to fight those enemies. Like whenever you have the ultimate with Omen and the spike is dropped somewhere, just go pick up these orbs, go onto the bomb site, and end of the story. Like uh, ult onto the spike, prepare yourself with a one way smokes uh, uh, for the retake, and you're you're a happy man, man. Like you're you're a happy 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 person. Now it's gonna be very very rough. Oh maybe. Maybe it is his idea. This guy is watching Charlatan, man! Very good, very good, very good. But enemies are not on the spike. No! No! No, Chamber! No, Chamber! <laughs> chamber was like, I'm out of here, man. I'm, ta I'm taking... Mine, 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 mine. <laughs> You need to communicate to your teammate uh, about this, man. Like, uh, uh, you didn't say anything to him. Uh, just tell him, I'm gonna pick up the spike with ultimate. Let's take the seaside control. Because if you took the seaside control, man, like, the post plan would have been a piece of cake. Like, uh, on seaside, you have enormous amount of good one-way smokes and ways to demolish the enemies. Like, you essentially know that the enemies are around this area of the map. You plant the spike maybe here, I don't know. And then, like... Uh, you can immediately reach this position, or maybe just teleport to this spot. And now we have the one-way smoke up here. We have our one-way smoke up here. We have our one-way smoke up here. Like, look at these three one-way smokes. Bro, like, you can use these one-way smokes to demolish the enemies. Like, basically, uh, for, for example, sometimes what I love to do is... Uh, I also love to play inside of this smoke. Like, especially on, on a defender side. Like, this is a 300 IQ play. Like, I'll do this one-way smoke here in eco rounds and halby rounds like when i have a low economy and the enemies think oh it's uh, it's his regular one way smoke like he already used it two or three times and then i'm like ba -ba 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 -boy! you should have communicated a bit better like to your teammate and tell him what what is the plan okay in this round we have the sheriff again and here listen man like uh, you're already playing an eco and halby round like your teammates are already not really good in their head like in these type of rounds you really want to take the control of the rounds in your own hands. Like whenever you're playing eco, half by, uh, when you notice that your teammates are maybe not the best when it comes to pushing the choke points, try to rely more on the aggressive place. We can go with a Sheriff and Heavy Shield, no problem. I would probably went with a Light Shield Inspector for this specific play. And at the start of the round, we're doing a one-way smoke up here. This smoke protects our teammates from the peak that is behind the site, and also we are clearing the enemies that are on top of the site. But 
I mean, this smoke should be delayed a bit, like, so your teammates see that no one is there. Then, the second smoke immediately goes into the garage area. I'm pushing this area with my teammates, flashing the enemies on the right side here, and then I'm teleporting inside of this smoke from this position. And of course, whenever you're teleporting, you want to jump, strafe, and teleport like this. Then, from this position, enormous amount of different options. You can smart ping that angle, and you can try to teleport on that angle from this position. If if you notice that the enemies are down here, like if, if your allies see them from this position, you just teleport there, you're above these enemies, and you can demolish them. Uh, from this position, you can teleport in the corner of the site. And then if the enemies are there, here or here, or at the back side, I mean, <laughs> trust me, in solo queue, they're not gonna observe that. Like, it is very easy to do this type of place. You need to understand, like, uh, when you're teleporting with Omen, and there is a lot of things happening, like there is a, I don't know, flashes flying around, like there is a raised nade in your face, like there's shit tons of things happening, TPs are almost inaudible. Like, it is very, very hard to hear the Omen's teleport, and it's very hard to focus on it. Okay, so in this round, it would be a bit better if you're playing with your teammates right now because they're aggressively pushing the seaside. Uh, uh, your smoke for the garage and CT once again are not good, my man! Listen, the, 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 the order in which you're doing the smokes is good. Like, it, it is very, very good actually, like, uh, that you're first doing the garage smoke, then the CT smoke. But a gar your garage smoke looks like this. Enemies can peek your teammates from this angle, from the middle here. From the right side here, but they can even maybe use this smoke as a as some kind of a cover here. I I, I don't know. I'm just imagining things right now. Uh, CT smoke. Whenever you're doing a CT smoke, and you're pushing the site initially, do the smoke like this. It is ten times better than doing it here, because you want to disallow the enemies to play this area of the map. You don't want to fight the enemies there. You don't want to see the enemies, because it is much easier to push in the site and clear the site when the smoke is activated there. And if the enemies are there, and they are peeking you through the smoke, they are always in a disadvantage. And you will always have higher chances to fuck up the enemies, than the enemies to fuck you up. It is much better than, I don't know, like, uh, your teammates are pushing, I don't know, they are clearing the site in some effed up way, and then, like, the enemy is playing here or here and, you know, like, demolishing your allies, and then using your smoke to take the cover and just get a get G GTFO, man. Here, I need to give you the props for the angle clearing. Not bad, the crosshair placement can be a bit better, like, we can definitely work on a crosshair placement a bit, like, uh, you didn't clear the window properly, um, there's a bit of the shaky movement, you know, like, I, I don't feel the confidence in your angle clearing, which is... Which, which needs to be fixed with a bit of practice, like uh, in a custom server or with the routines that I'm going to share with you, like, after the session. Not bad. Not, not, not bad, like, what you try to do at the end of the round. But essentially, like, uh, in, that, in that round, you should have just played with your teammates. End of the story. And th this is what you're missing. Like, uh, if, if you already see that your teammates are so aggressive when they're pushing some site, you need to use your utility and pre-place it before the round even starts. If your allies can reach this position and this position in less than 3 seconds of the round, immediately as the round starts, do one smoke, do the second smoke, go try to give them the flash and let them push the site. This is this is a wasted time. This is this is what we call in Valorant a dead air. Like at the start of the round, you always want to tell your teammates do something. Like, have some kind of a call. Like, anything. Like, tell them, guys, let's push A. Guys, let's push C. Guys, let's push B. Push garage. Like, whenever you don't give a call, your teammates are just gonna play some kind of a stupid default. And they're not gonna use their brain, like, that much. You see, right, right now, like, uh, one more tip. One more huge tip. If you notice that your teammates are peeking the window area of the map on Haven, and you're playing Omen, always give your teammates a top smoke for the B. Like, your teammates are doing this type of a stupid peek, like this, always give them the smoke, like this, and then let the smoke drop. You never want to risk your teammates dying here from some kind of an operator, double bait setup, double tower setup, anything. Whenever you're peeking the window, without the flash, without the utility, that is a it's not even 50-50 gunfight. Enemies have much easier time killing you than you have the time to kill the enemies. Like, this is the worst. This is absolutely 
the most stupid and the worst peak any human being can do on Haven. And this, this is what I'm telling you, like, in, in these low elo lobbies, like, uh, uh, if your teammates are already speaking, like, they're all, all, already using communication, tell them what to do. Like, every single time you don't tell these guys where to push or what to do, they're, they're just lost. Your Neon is pushing a long garage. Your teammates are holding passively, doing nothing. It is much better at the start of the round to tell them, guys, let's do something. Like, do, do you want to push A or you want to push C? And that is how you can just navigate your teammates from making these type of stupid mistakes. Like, right now, I, I mean, Neon died for absolutely nothing, but only because there is no initial round strategy. Okay. Man, 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 man. One of your worst nemesis when it comes to the shooting techniques is your understanding when to stop and actually shoot. Like, I feel that you always start shooting much sooner than you actually stop your movement. Like, and that's why your some of your bullets go, like, left, right, uh, here, there, like... Uh, like, this should never happen for you. Like, when you're peeking the enemy, and then, like, these bullets go there. Like, you peek the enemy, you stop, you shoot. Like, this is how your bullets should be traveling into the enemy. Like, there should not be these wasted bullets that are completely relying on the RNG of a weapon. When you're taking the mid control as Omen, one of the very powerful ways to surprise the enemies and actually, you know, take the control before the enemies take it, is by teleporting over this box here. So the round starts and you immediately do this. And then, like, this enemy doesn't have enough time to actually peek you here because the barrier is there and he needs to move slowly and then do this type of a peek. You have time to commit to the teleport. This enemy, when he's pushing the mid area, he doesn't have time, like, you are basically there. And you are already going to take the mid area before he even reaches that position. So if you already want to take the mid control and push with your teammates, like just do this man at the start of the round, come here and then push. And whenever you're pushing B site or garage area, always smoke the front of the B here and then navigate your teammates in front of the site and then try to surprise the enemies with a fast coordinated push into the site. Like there is no reason to fight the enemies here, you know, like uh, no reason to fight them in a choke point. You want to fight them on the site, and you want to protect your teammates until they reach the choke point. One thing that I really don't like in, in, in these ranks, like uh, Gold, Platinum, in, in Valorant in general, is that uh, when people find out something that is working, like they find out that uh, pushing one site was very easy, and it was working, they, they never do it again. Like, why are you afraid to push the same site that you pushed in the previous round, and it worked like, a, like this? Like... If something works in a solo queue environment, keep abusing it until it stops working. There's no need to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There's no need to change the bomb size that you're pushing. Like, use and abuse what you think works. Okay, Neon is a mo monster, like a better support, man. Better support. We, we need utility usage. S speed of utility usage, zero. Like, literally zero. This needs to be improved, my friend. Like, uh, my friend, though, like, your smokes need to go a bit faster. And your utility to support your allies in time. You cannot play Omen like a Astra, like a Viper, like a Brimstone. If I already have a Neon that is running, that is going in, she doesn't give a flip and F before the round starts. I have this placed. Then I have this placed. Then... As the Neon is... I mean, you can do that smoke there or the one-way smoke up here. Like, whatever. Then, Neon is running, 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 running. Like, we're clearing this angle. I'm flashing the enemies from this position, pushing with the Neon. If she has a wall here... So, imagine your Neon has this type of a wall. I will teleport on the other side of the wall here. And I can engage the enemies with the Neon. Here, one free strategy with Neon. So, Neon can come to this area. She... Pulls up the wall that goes there, you teleport on the other side of the wall and surprise the enemies from here. Or maybe teleport in this corner and then additionally surprise the enemies. Or maybe teleport from this position somewhere else. Like That is the direction in which every single Omen player should be thinking. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
we we need to be we need to be sure that that uh, that killjoy is dead. You know, like now now we need to check it, check it. Uh, one thing that I definitely don't like uh, in your gameplay is the paranoia usage. Paranoia usage is. Uh, did you ever use paranoia in this mod? Like I I don't remember. Uh, like if you know where the enemy is. If the enemy is behind the site, Sage is pushing the CT area of the map, like in, in the previous rounds, like, uh, use the paranoia and engage that enemy. That is a free kill for you, basically. Like, uh, enemy will not see you for, like, I don't know, three seconds, I think. It's gonna be ne near sighted, and plus, the sound is gonna be off. Paranoia usage needs to be higher. And if it is already at the last round of the match, like, use your ultimate for something. Like, I'm, I'm like, your ultimate, uh, essentially, Omen ultimate. However you use it, it is good, as long as you're not splitting away from your teammates too much. So, for an example, on Haven, on the attacker side, like, uh, uh, the best way to use the Omen ultimate, in my opinion, on attacker side, is a, as a recon tool. To reveal the enemies and play with the enemy mines. Like, I usually use it at the highest positions on the sites, like, when my teammates are pushing and trying to reveal the enemies and try to, you know, provide that intel support. But, of course, you can use it for the executes, like, uh, for an example... On the A set, like, you can always do the smoke on tower, smoke here, flash the enemies on the site, and then, like, uh, maybe teleport under the site by teleporting here, or maybe teleporting, like, uh, on top of the site by teleporting here. Sometimes what, what I even love to do is I love to teleport in this corner here because it can be, like, sometimes when you teleport in this angle, the audio is not very good because you're on this elevated position and the enemies are actually going to think that you're up there and maybe they're not going to be focused on you and basically they're going to think like oh he's up there like whatever i need to focus on the enemies here so you know like uh, if it is already the last round figure out something like at the end of the day if it is the last round of the match and you have no idea how to use the omen ultimate and you're already committing to the push just use it in one position and cancel it because the mental pressure that you create on enemies, it is insane. Th this is very good. I love this a lot. But teleport. Go, 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 go. This was unnecessary gunfight, I must say. It could have gone in both ways. Like, you have 72 HP. You know, like, if you already have the ultimate, go on C set, prepare for the post plant, let your teammates rotate. You waste 10 seconds from the enemy's rotation. Like, you get the point. Like. Okay, nice double engagement. Not bad half, not bad half. The main thing that was missing from this uh, attacker side is uh, uh, better coordination with the team. Rely on a much better utility when you're pushing the sites, which I think I explained you very well, like, uh, throughout this WOD review. And uh, tapping and spraying needs to be fixed. Like, uh, you need to spend some time, like, uh, working on those two techniques of shooting. And uh, crosser placement, like, oftentimes it is, like, you know, not, 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 not there, like, uh, deathmatch, practice range, go on a custom server and just do something like this, like, uh, you know, imagine that you're in a real game and just try to clear all the angles properly, like, uh, with a proper crosser placement, jiggle peek them, crosser there, clear this angle now, move forward, crosser placement there, crosser placement here, crosser placement there, then we have this angle, we have this angle, this angle, move forward, we're holding the crosser somewhere, like where the enemies can be, jiggle picking that angle, this angle, etc, etc. Like, it's very 50-50, like, when it comes to your crosser placement. Oh my god, defender side. Just a second. We have some rules for a defender side. Moment. I need to take something to drink. By the way... And that's it for today's coaching session with Charlatano Papito. On 2000 likes, I'm going to release the second part of this VOD review on a defender's side. So make sure to hit the subscribe button, turn your notifications on, leave a like and comment. Follow me on twitch.tv forward slash charlatan for some epic Valorant live streams. Check out my other social media down in the description below and join my official Discord server if you want to hire me as your personal Radiant coach. I'm yours, one and only, Warden of the Tricksters community, and thank you for watching. Cut, baby!